perfect cosmetically it's beautiful everywhere i've ridden the bike i've been riding it for the last week here everybody has something to say about the bike the oohs and ahs and the people that don't know about bikes when i tell them it's a 1979 they're like wow i thought it was brand new the bike looks new and it runs perfectly the guy we bought this from we bought a collection of bikes from him five and they're all in fantastic condition this one's no different um let me uh let me fire it up and give you a quick riding demo and i'll bring it inside and we'll go over all the specifics on the bike with you fires right up idles perfectly the carbs were just rebuilt on it the bike's been completely serviced the bike needs absolutely nothing it's ready to go i'd ride this bike cross country tomorrow let's go an exhaust note on this thing This is a 79 GL1000 and it is in mechanically perfect condition and cosmetically it's gorgeous. When I first saw it, uh, when he rolled it out of the garage, the first thing I noticed was the front fender and I was like, wow, is that a brand new fender? No, he said, it's the original fender um, and the chrome on it is just gorgeous. We get a lot of vintage Japanese bikes in here and very rarely do we get one in that has chrome as beautiful as this one does pretty much everywhere. The turn signals, the headlight mounts, the, the bars, uh, the brand new bars, they're a sportier bend than the stock ones. Uh, original factory mirrors, the chrome engine guards, the, the chrome is brand new on these. And these are actually brand new chrome. Uh, they had the carbs rebuilt last year and put chrome intakes on there. Carbs were fully rebuilt, brand new air cleaner. All the fluids were changed to oil, antifreeze, final drive, everything's brand new. And all the brake fluids were, were cleaned and serviced. The, um, also, the timing belt was uh, replaced, and he put new covers on the timing uh, on the timing belt covers. They're brand new, polished aluminum covers with new bolts. So the engine's just absolutely gorgeous. Runs perfect, doesn't leak any oil. It's fast, smooth, true superbike style. Uh, the bike will do 125 miles an hour as is. The exhaust system was completely removed, and the entire exhaust system was ceramic coated. It's a $400 job. Right there, easily 400 more with the labor. So the engine's completely serviced, needs nothing. The tires on the bike have less than 500 miles on them. The tires are in perfect condition. They're um, Spitfire 11Rs, uh, just beautiful. Bridgestone Spitfire 11Rs on the front and rear. Brake pads are perfect on the bike. The um, brakes have all been serviced. Uh, the bike only has 25,000 miles on it. My friend Rich Burgess from Florida, Bought the same exact bike. I had one come in here last year, had 50,000 miles on it. We auctioned it off. He bought it for $3,000, not running, and then did everything I said on this one. So he probably had six or 7,000 in the bike by the time he's done. This one has 25,000 miles, less than half the miles, and it's in fantastic condition. The leather on the center console is beautiful. It has a chrome luggage rack, which the chrome is beautiful. The rear fender chrome is perfect on the bike, as is the, uh, the um, all of the, lenses and, and lights, just, just an absolutely gorgeous bike. Like I said, everybody who's seen this is like, wow, 
Uh, personally, we, we own over 150 bikes here. I would be thrilled to have this as my only bike for a daily driver. My buddy Rich, who bought his, says, it, says it's, it's his favorite daily driver. Or you can put it on display because it is museum quality. Um, the, uh, what else can I tell you about the mechanics? Okay, the, sh the shocks on these were, were notoriously stiff and, and not good dampening. The, the shocks were replaced with new aftermarket shocks that, and uh, they're in a brand new condition. I think they're Coney's. I'm 95% sure they're Coney shocks. Whatever they are, they, they work fantastic with the stock front forks. Bike has triple disc brakes, Comstar wheels, and it's, uh, like I said, it's totally sorted out, needs nothing. The, uh, it has a glove box up on the top here, as they all do. I have the original owner's manual with it, and I've got the original tool kit, and everything's in perfect condition. All the gauges work beautifully, the uh, blinkers, uh, and the audible. You hear the horn for the... Um, car horn. High beam, low beam. Check out all the dash. The, the gauges are impeccable. The uh, neutral switch, the uh, high beam indicator, the oil indicator, the turn signal indicator. Every single bulb, every single electrical component on this bike is perfect. Rear brake, uh, rear brake hand brake uh, signal, and then the rear brake signal work perfectly. The um, left and right blinkers, like I said, everything, and it starts right up. This is an exhaust note on this thing. I don't remember them sounding this good when I was a kid. This one sounds awesome. And uh, I, I believe the, the baffles are the original stock baffles, but they, they sure do sound good. Um, I have a write-up I'll read about to you about the bike. Um, from Motorcycle Classics. Uh, the Honda Goldwing GL1000 has a horizontally opposed flat floor that keeps weight down low and is actually one inch shorter than three and a half inches narrower than BMW's 900cc twin of the same era. This bike was made from 1975 until present. Want me to close the door? It's 1975 until present, which at this time, uh, actually they wrote this in June 2007. Um, the, uh, they still make old ones, of course. This model was, was discontinued. This is the last year of the 1000, 1979, and they had all the bugs worked out of it. It had 80 horsepower, 7,500 RPM, and would do 125 miles an hour. It's a 999cc single overhead cam, two valve per cylinder, water-cooled flat four. Uh, looking back, it's easy to think the first Honda GL1000 Goldwing in 1975 was a revolutionary motorcycle. It was, in fact, evolutionary. Built to appeal to the American bigger is better theory. Today, the Honda Goldwing is an icon for the cross country touring motorcycle. But back in the day, it was just Honda's best guess at what Americans wanted in a touring motorcycle. The, uh, um, let's see, the GL1000 Goldwing, the name came from the Honda logo, a Golden Wing, introduced in late 1974, has the 999cc opposed four cylinder engine, a wheelbase of 60.6 .6 inch and a curb weight of 650 pounds. This was 100 pounds more than the Z1, which many pundits thought was the motorcycle that the GL was supposed to be. That was not necessarily so. The Z1 was a red happy machine, sullen under 5,000 RPM, arm socket wrenching above. The GL1000, which had almost the same power and performance as the Z1, was calm, quiet, and comfortable. Honda was broadening the field rather than going head to head. Then, uh, take for the um, GL1000 was so well executed, it seemed like the Goldwing represented a new frontier in motorcycle technology. Take for instance, the, since the Goldwing's liquid cooling. Then there was a matter of operating the overhead camshafts, one in each bank of cylinders, with, uh, with a tooth rubber and fabric timing belts, which were a decided rarity in 1975. Belts are both less expensive and wider than chains or gears, the only drawback being the need to change the belts before they wear out and break. On the wing, this is an easy job by removing the front covers from the engine, and it has a brand new timing belt on there. So timing belt, the front engine covers, the carbs are rebuilt, new spark plugs, all the oil is changed. Everything's perfect on this bike. It needs nothing. It also has a brand new battery in it, a $150 Uasa battery. An interesting touch is a gear-driven alternator rotating in the opposite direction of the crankshaft. 
helping to counterbalance the slight sideways surge of the longitudinal fan shaft when the throttle is lifted at rest, a, ph a phenomenon that BMW riders know well. You know, when you're sitting there in the beamer and you flip the throttle, the whole bike goes back and forth. This one has a, a counterbalancer, so it stays perfectly smooth. Also, a cush driver is fitted after the crankshaft, reducing the jerkiness that can result from abrupt on-off throttle action. The idea was to deliver power smoothly. Another interesting feature is a linkage operating the four 32 millimeter K hin carburetors on one cable to open and close the quartet. And again, this, these cars were professionally just rebuilt. They have brand new air filters. All the jets were clean, and it has brand new chrome intakes on it. So it just looks fantastic. By a Honda Expert. What's that? By a Honda Expert. By a Honda Expert. Exactly. Um, aesthetics are beauty of the eye of the beholder, and uh, the. Uh, this GO 1000, everybody who's seen it has been like, wow, this thing's beautiful. You just don't see these on the road. I personally don't like the ones from the 80s, the, the early 80s that had the fairings on them. This is, in my opinion, the last year of the good looking naked gold wings. And this was the evolution. This one had the Comstar wheels. They came originally with spoke wheels, but the spokes didn't hold up that well underneath the horsepower and weight of this bike. So these Comstars are, are the, uh, fantastic, rock fantastic, rock solid. Um, what else can I tell you about it? Uh, the Gold Wing was a wild success. According to Honda, over 97,000 GO 1000 were sold in the country from 1975 through 1979. And come 1980, major changes were in order. The original Japanese made GO 1000 was replaced by the new GL 1100. So this is the last year of the lineup. It has all the improvements that they made to it, along with the ones the owner made to it, the ceramic coating on the exhaust, the upgraded rear suspension, the upgraded tires, uh, upgraded battery, uh, chromed out uh, engine covers, and, and uh, it's just it's just an absolutely fantastic bike. I also wanted to add that we have the clean certificate of title on the bike, um, showing that uh, it's a '79 GL 1000. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. And this was from the second owner of the bike, so uh, technically it's a two-owner oh, bike. So it hasn't been around a lot, obviously, well loved by the previous owners. Um, it's being sold to raise, raise proceeds to finish the New England Motorcycle Museum. Uh, again, if we had the resources, I would just keep this bike and uh, put a few other plate on it and use it as my daily driver. It's a fantastic bike um, and a great investment. They're going up in value. The NADA value on this in number one condition is $5,000. This one is uh, you know, definitely a, a number one in my opinion, and it has a lot of upgrades to it. So it, we sold one not running for 3,000 with 50,000 miles, so in my opinion, this bike's worth between on the low end 5,000 and on the high end 7,000 easily. So um, good luck bidding on it. Uh, we're not going to give it away, but uh, the reserve is, is more than reasonable, and um, it's a fantastic bike. And we just don't see them come in sorted out as well as this one or loved as much by someone who was completely anal about the maintenance. He told me he waxed the bike at least once a year, was stored in doors, uh, and just maintained impeccably. The oil changed every year, and it only has 25,000 miles, which is nothing. These engines are known to easily go 200,000 miles. If you have any questions about the bike, you want to take a look at it, give us a call. Uh, our phone number is 860-454-7024. I probably left a few things out, but um, we'll have a nice write-up on the bike too. And just to summarize, it's a, it's a fantastic riding bike, super smooth. It rides like a true super bike, 80 horsepower, 125 miles an hour, smooth, and it pulls like a freight train. So good luck bidding on it. God bless. I hope it goes to a good home.